Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is V and this is Critical Healing Moment. This is a channel where I share my radical reflections on social work and life. Hey audience, this is V from 2024. So this video I originally filmed in August of last year um, as a part two to my previous video, but I haven't gotten around to editing it now. And I just wanted to give you all a bit of a preface that this video is me talking about friendship and community. And while some things about my life have changed in this realm, um, from a few months ago, a lot of it is still the same, so I still think this video is really relevant, especially as I go into the next year and how I want my 2024 to look. So enjoy my newest video. I guess I'll start with how I've been feeling lately so as I am sort of like entering this new phase of life after grad school having a new job and sort of like settling into a new routine I've been trying to think of ways that I want to be more involved in um, community life and just like building a community and having friends and I think this is kind of a challenging area for me right now because I moved to a new city about a year and a half ago. As I mentioned in my previous video, I've lived in this apartment for over a year and a half. Where I used to live, I lived in that area for six, seven years and also I was involved in sort of local activist community organizing life for since like I ever moved to that area and that was always sort of my interest and way that I met new people and made friends and grew my social connections. That was how I found people who had similar perspectives as me and similar values as me, sort of these revolutionary, liberatory values. Sort of my regular social activities before the pandemic were to attend like different events and meetings and also like community building, sort of like things like dinners, potlucks, right? And we can call things like community building. It sounds like very formal, but it was you know, if it just boils down to like a group of people who have a common interest getting together and like spending time with each other. And I spent a lot of time with other sort of like leftist Asian Americans. At the end of the day, I moved to a new city. I was attending grad school, but also I was attending grad school during COVID. The environment of going to grad school which is already different than going to undergrad during a pandemic where like half your classes are online is not super conducive to making very strong connections and so now that i'm out of school um i do have some sort of like people i know like acquaintances people i've had a couple of classes with but like are they just like the closest people i know who you know went through this sort of experience of grad school together or are they actually my friends, you know? I think I'm sort of trying to unpack this idea of like who I would consider a friend and like what friendship really means to me. Let me also now go way back to when I was young, like when I was in elementary school, first, second, third grade. My recollection of my early years in school was that one, I was almost always the only Asian person at my school. I grew up in a predominantly white community, suburban, um, middle class community, and I was typically the only Asian person. I honestly don't even remember that many people of color in general at my school. When I was in those grades, I tended to have sort of one person that I would consider like my closest friend in my class. But every year that person would change because they would move away, they would go to a different school. I had a lot of like instability in my friendships in my early years. And 
I didn't have like a consistent best friend and to this day I don't even have someone who I might consider my best friend. I do live with my partner and we've been together for almost eight years and even though he is <gasps> oh my god okay I had to get up because my cat's window perch started like the suction cup started popping off the window and I thought he was gonna fall and I hope it stays because sometimes they come undone I think because it's so hot outside but anyways um even though we've been together for a long time because of how I view relationships and how I view sort of my values on sort of relationships beyond a romantic one um I don't even know if I would consider him my best friend even though he is for sure the person that knows everything about everything that I go through on a daily basis I made a video a few years ago on relationship anarchy and I think it's been super tough having that perspective of like all of your relationships like people sort of beyond your primary like romantic partnership are like can have like as much importance to you as that person who has that role or those people who have that role but because i have such a lack of um people that i know in this city um it's feeling very like like i for sure need like more people than just him right like i need to be surrounded by people who i care about who care about me um who are going to be like involved in my everyday life um who are going to be um participating in my everyday life like in close proximity to me not having that is making me feel like very alone i would consider myself an introvert i don't typically need to be around a lot of people um and i'll often do things by myself just because i prefer to do things by myself but at the same time it is this ideal of having people around that i know and can trust that i really value as like my perspective on life i feel like i had gotten off track but oh i was saying that i didn't have yeah i don't have a script for this i'm just kind of like talking but i was talking about my early um sort of like school age years how i never really had a best friend um and to this day i don't really have someone that i consider a best friend and throughout my time in school through middle school through high school and even through college and my friends in college who i still keep in touch with and i value their friendships to the to this day and we just, just saw each other recently um yet i've always felt like i've been on the outside of those groups i've always felt like i was in that position of like i'm part of this group we like eat lunch together we hang out in homeroom together but i'm not really in i'm like always on the outside and like for me i've also always had these sort of like one-off connections with people as well like people who are not in the groups or other people who are on the outside of groups like i would find really like a connection with them um i'm just sort of that type of person who like i guess i'm like drawn to people who are sort of like outsiders or feel like they're on the periphery or who are sort of alone and i guess i relate to that somewhat um so i've always been on the outside of different friend groups and i think part of that is because there's always been some part of me some part of sort of my whole identity some part of my authentic being that i felt like i just couldn't share with 
that group of people and it's been different things throughout my life my like sort of course of life for a lot of the times like when i was a kid or a teenager in school i do feel like it was my race and my culture as i mentioned was typically always the only like asian person in class if i was not the only asian person in class i was the only vietnamese person in class and i went to a high school that had a pretty large population of asian americans and even then i felt not a part of you know, sort of these the sort of like asian american groups because i wasn't east asian i wasn't chinese there was like a large group of like i'm realizing like sort of christianity and like evangelical christianity that was a big part of like some high school groups that i'm realizing now um, that I was not a part of because I grew up in the Catholic Church and even though we might have believed in the same God, it's like a completely different culture. And I went to like a different church and also I um, came from a further away community and so I only knew, I believe, two other people from my middle school who went to that high school and well, honestly one of them I had been to I think every school with her. Um, we even went to the same church, um, but we weren't that that close anymore. Um, we kind of grew apart over the years, kind of that result of me having different close friends throughout my early childhood. I've always kind of been on the outside. I think I got used to doing things on my own, and now that I'm sort of a YouTuber and I, you know, upload videos about my life online that has always been a part of my experience as a young person being very invested in my online experience and honestly making friends online when i was in middle school my favorite band was the click five which they don't exist anymore they broke up in like 2010 okay i followed the whole thing um but after school, I would go online on their message boards and I would talk to other fans and those are my friends. And I also, um, I think I was also kind of active in like the Harry Potter fandom back then too. And I would write fan fiction and I would um, talk to people on message boards about like how to improve my writing and things like that. And I was always just like an online kid. I think also because going out and also like just hanging out with my friends in person was not always available to me for various reasons. Being part of sort of an immigrant refugee family, I feel like family was made to be more important than people outside of the family. And so I used to hang out a lot with my cousins, um, my aunts and uncles, I spent a lot of time with my family growing up. I spent a lot of time at my grandparents' house growing up and we always had people around. So I never felt lonely like that as a kid, um, just always having family around. Um, my dad has eight siblings, so I have a lot of cousins and I used to spend a lot of time with them when I was younger especially like during the summers and the weekends and things like that and so i always considered my family my friends um when i was growing up and sometimes when there were opportunities to do things like sleepovers or parties or field trips and things like that i was not able to go because there is some aspect of it that was perceived as unsafe to my parents or like unnecessary or you know frivolous or whatever and me being the oldest daughter i feel like i had the strictest of that experience and so i didn't get to have like sleepovers or i would go to sleepovers but i wouldn't actually be allowed to sleep over i would have to go home when everyone was going to sleep or i couldn't i remember i couldn't go on like certain like big field trips when i went to college granted this is all before i sort of developed my sort of revolutionary politics and so when i went to college i was a part of the marching band 
which I started in high school and that was where I formed my to this day I guess like longest friendships um, people that I still keep in touch with and we kind of see each other like every year or so and we just kind of get together we're we don't all live super close to each other we might there might be like a few people kind of sprinkled around an area but not like immediately close um, but those are my friends that I've had for at this point you know since 2011 like over 10 years um, and at the same time it was still the situation of me being on the outside because again attending a predominantly white school this was how it usually happened i would usually be the only asian person or the only person of color in a friend group and again i would have these friendships with people of color at school but they wouldn't be part of a group they would kind of be like I'm just your friend from like this one class we had together or um, you know some of these other clubs that I was involved in but they weren't my in my primary friend group um, and when I was in college was when I started really trying to like dive into my Asian American culture and identity and history and I started to develop this political awareness and revolutionary politics and let this be clear it is not the university's curriculum making me more radical for sure i was one of the students who was trying to push for things to be more progressive on my college campus um, because it was very white it was very dominated by um fraternities and sororities and that kind of greek life i started to develop this revolutionary politics after starting college and again going online was the place where i found people who had similar experiences to me um there was at one point this facebook group for like asian american feminists that i was a part of and um, I made a lot of friends in that group that some of them I eventually met in person and I would love for one day for someone to like and maybe it's me I don't know to like document this history um, to do sort of like I need like a video essay on like Asian American spaces of like the mid 2000s and like early 2010s because there was so much drama and arguably Sui Park's hashtag not your Asian sidekick and then the hashtag cancel Colbert was like the first canceling and the thing that started cancel culture and we need to unpack that because I was in the trenches of that okay I'm saying all of this to say that Yes, I was always kind of on the outside of groups. So then um, once I started becoming involved in sort of activism and organizing, I started making friends in that space and most of my friends were um, Asian American, sort of young adult people with like somewhat of a, you know, college educated, um background and i really found belonging in those spaces and at the same time i still kind of felt on the outside i still kind of felt like because the group that i was in formed at a particular time and in a particular like with a particular group of people i feel like um you know i get it things sort of cement that like this is sort of their core group of people and I don't like it's not really a critique it's just that that's sometimes how things are and that I'm realizing and so I think it's hard for someone on the outside to kind of break into these spaces especially me being like more introverted more like I can do things on my own like more like independent in that way I you know, I'm sometimes okay with being 
on the outside of things. But then that kind of leaves me wondering kind of where I stand in um, sort of this idea of like a community. So now I guess I'll transition into this sort of idea of like friends as community because I think that what I'm really looking for now is like a group of people that are in community with me in like various ways because community can be a group of people with a shared identity for sure that is one way that we define community but community is also a group of people who kind of live in the same area um a group of people who are like neighbors a group of peer a people who sort of experience the local social institutions together i think that after so many years of being involved in asian american spaces i kind of got tired of that and i kind of got tired of sort of this neoliberal identity politics of only being with people who share your identity but i do think that it is kind of a limiting worldview to be around people with on, like only people who with like similar viewpoints and um similar cultural backgrounds and similar um sort of upbringings as I've sort of branched out, especially in workspaces, and as I've mentioned, I think I mentioned it in my previous video, um, how the other social workers I work with, even though we're all social workers, we all have vastly different upbringings and points of views, and not ones that are strictly dedicated to revolutionary politics, which my life surely is, but it's interesting and eye-opening to be around people in that way. And at the same time, I would like to also have close proximity to people who also share those viewpoints, but from various different backgrounds. Currently, right now, like what I do love about where I'm living is that I have a lot of interactions with my neighbors and even though I don't know a lot about them the more I know about them and trust just like develops over time of like more interactions like I do love that I get to talk to my neighbors and um, I've met everyone that lives in my building and um, you know there are things that we can bond over such as our landlord that's been really nice and also I also appreciate my new co-workers you know as social workers I think that we have somewhat of a similar perspective but there's for sure like things different life experiences and different priorities that we each have that that clearly make me sort of like stand out or like it's just like another thing that makes me sort of be on the outside of things because a lot of the times when I'm meeting new people especially when I was in grad school was having this sort of like revolutionary ideal and like vision and that creates a barrier around like who can I vibe with um, who can I trust in like sharing these viewpoints and not being like completely dismissed uh, because these values are so central to who I am and how I want to live my life that like they're kind of the most important things to me in like trusting someone and like forming a relationship with them and so yeah I'm kind of like looking for that sort of community local um sort of life and honestly it's because when i think about sort of how we survive in society it's going to have to be w around like with the people in our community like right next door um when natural disaster or like a tragedy happens like those are the people who are going to be like right there who are going to be experiencing that with you I think for me it doesn't help that like there are some people who I consider to be like my close friends but they absolutely do not live right near me there are people who I've had friendships with for 
almost 10 years and we're pretty close yet there are still some barrier in sort of like connecting with them over but at the same time like they've been my friends for a long time but they're also not super close to me and like i'm kind of looking for that like lifelong sort of like friendship and community like people that i have spent a lot of my life with and people that will be there for the long haul who who aren't going to move away people that i can build something like physical with like people who i can you know who live down the street and we can organize like a community garden together or people who um, we could work together on like projects that improve our community somehow because we are invested and because we care about it like that's honestly what i'm looking for in this stage of life and it would be great if we had some overlap in values for sure and that's why i'm looking to like settle down in a place in my previous video i mentioned like wanting to buy a house and um that is kind of the reason why is because i'm tired of moving i'm tired of being sort of new to an area i'm tired of being surrounded by people who move away i just kind of want some stability and to sort of build these community bonds and i'm like ready for it and i believe that that is what we need as a part of our revolutionary future i guess that's it for this video maybe it was a little bit rambly but i just wanted to sit down and kind of talk through some of these ideas i've been having with you all um i have not been super great at making videos i was really excited to but you know making videos is a lot of effort and um as i mentioned previously sometimes the inspiration doesn't strike and so you know i can't promise that you will get videos regularly but i still hope to be um contributing to this channel in the future so um that being said thank you for watching if you like these kinds of videos please subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye